All right, so we're going to be doing a PvP tier list for global, and this one is going to be very exciting because I feel like this one's going to either confuse or anger a lot of people. And I mean, hey, I'll give my explanations. Then you guys let me know why down below you think I'm stupid or you think I'm the smartest man alive. Hopefully it's the latter. We're going to be doing that in this video only PvP, okay? If you want me to continue doing PvE, I don't mind, right? I don't mind. It's just... I. I didn't want to do it for this one. Five units, maybe I wanted to wait for like eight, nine, considering next season's probably going to have like an extra three to four units coming out. So I was like, okay, maybe PVE will do every second season. And if that's what you guys would like, let me know down below. And that's what I will be doing from now on. It seems that I'm going to probably do it for season five, then seven, nine, and so on and so forth, right? So five new units, a bunch of tier list changes, bunch of people going down, some people going up. And I, I think some people going up. I think everyone's going down though. Um, so yeah, we're going to have a fun time just basically making people very confused. And just looking at this, we are eight units off because Luck and Yami are missing. But bro, it's very close. We are very, very close. One of them's free too. So we're only seven pre uh, premium units away. Very insane, very insane. So for a lot of these guys, I'm considering it at their max value. So let's say their dupes do help a lot. Well then, sure, their dupes are going to be good. So for example... Uh, Halloween Noel, I would like to consider her at two dupes. And primarily, if you have like two or three dupes in that skill page is the best case scenario for her, right? Tier lists are not really meant to cater towards the free to plays all the time. But I also think this game is very generous where if you want to build certain units, you can, right? Of course, I'm not expecting you to have every single unit on this tier list basically in the same exact order because your box might differ because you might be missing certain units, which might make other units better because of their synergy or because certain units you already invest in have dupes, have skill page dupes. So of course, this is just the most objective tier list I could make because of course, Black Clover Mobile is a very synergetic game where if you miss even one unit, sometimes it could all crumble apart, especially if you don't have William or Noel. Those are two game-changing units for your account, right? So I just wanted to give that as preface. If you guys are kind of struggling with like what units you should be using, let me know down below. I would love to answer if I do see the comments and if I do have the time. Been very busy trying to free that up, trying to make more time. So let's get into it. We're going to start with the different tiers while considering the new units that we do have, okay? So I want to start off strong, okay? We're starting off with a banger, bro. Noel down to S. Reason being, Noel. Noel, I, wait, I made this meme just before post or just before uh, recording this video. If people need an explanation, this is it. This is it. Noel beats Noel. That's that's literally it, okay? So Noel is kind of suffering because of Halloween Noel, okay? Halloween Noel taunts, which means you can't use the barrier for two turns, and she's way quicker six speed six base speed quicker and a lot of the times you might run her with four speed so by far this noel is way quicker and then even at that she reduces the damage that noel is doing turn one and also reducing the magic attack so hello summer noel is getting cooked by halloween noel um it's not even funny right so this summer noel kind of just gg especially when you're running it on a full blue team right you could basically what you're able to do if you really are scared of the noel ultimate full blue team Noel can use her skill to turn one, can't use that barrier. Then Halloween Noel alts Noel, which means Noel can't use her ultimate anymore. So she can't use her skill to barrier, can't use her AoE ultimate, and then she's done. So this Noel gets heavily influenced by Halloween Noel. I've said that word a lot, so I want to stop. I hope that's enough explanation for that because I don't want to say that her name again, okay? That's the first thing. Now, the second thing, another unit who gets severely downgraded well, it's not severely but downgraded enough by halloween noel is radis okay reason being radis's main kit main reason for existing is his ultimate okay it's the ultimate and you could easily get rid of it by both of noel's skills either the taunt or the the taunt skill too or the ultimate that lowers the sp okay so there's honestly not really a big reason for radis to be there he cannot use his barriers if you target him right and if you're playing, this is this is a very good way to do this, actually. Full blue team, silence Halloween, uh, silence Summer Noel. She can't use her barrier. Alt Rodas, he can't use his barrier. Or taunt him, right? Either or. Both of them can't use their barrier. That's GG, right? So it's very interesting how you could actually play it. Rodas definitely gets cooked. Anyone with barriers who are in the top rankings do get cooked quite a lot, right? Quite a lot. That's a big thing. Now, the next thing is Rodas. If you really think about it, we're going away from the insane debuffer meta. Now, sure, there's Noel, but, but, okay, the main thing with Noel is this one. The reduced damage dealt by 40% on attacker class enemies. 
Now, that goes through Radis' debuff block. And then the big thing about Noelle is that it's her taunt, right? Taunts go through debuff block. So, at that point, you use the skill 2 turn 1 if there's a Radis. And whoever you're attacking is going to be taunted to Noelle no matter what. And if it's, if it's a DPS, they're going to do less damage. And if it's someone who you're putting it on because they're a healer or a barrier unit like Radis, well, they can't use it anymore. So, Radis isn't blocking Noelle. And in the top ranks, that's really the only big unit who you're going to be seeing at Lotus. But, you know, turn 1... It's not really as much of a problem anymore. The only real problem it causes is if you're running a Charlotte team, if you're thinking about it, because you don't have that defense reduction. But Rodis is still pretty good. He's just going to start losing his place more and more and more and more. So for now, I think that makes up the S plus tier. Okay, Charlotte's still very good. And there's a funny thing that I honestly should have mentioned more, but... I it just guys I honestly I missed this talent or I kind of like dismissed it if anything with the skill two you put the total defense and why this is crazy is because if you have the talent which when you block you get debuff block this is insane for the current meta right you put this you get the debuff block and then Mars isn't really needed anyway right so that's another thing it's that Mars there's a lot of other ways that are going to pop up to get debuff block. And of course, you don't need debuff block on everyone. It's only certain units. And over time, it's going to be good. Even Black Asta applies total defense, Charlotte. So you're going to get debuff block by other ways besides, Rod uh, besides Mars now. So that is my big thing to really uh, kind of mention. Now, Asta gets pushed down. There's not really a reason to have him. Damage-wise, not really cooking too much anyway. Blue units are definitely doing very well in this meta, um, especially with Noel. It's just insane. There's not really much more to say on that matter. Sally, I mean, she's good, but there's not, like, in PvP, she's not really doing what she would need to, I guess, is the way to explain for Sally. Like, she's good. If you want to run, like, a nuking team or something, you can, but we're kind of straying a bit too much away from that at the moment for me to really recommend doing that, right? Now, next up, Charmy gets pushed down. Um, I want to explain something as to why. Is Noelle completely cooks her? Completely. If Noelle has her skill page, right, block HP recovery, so no Charmy's passive, or Charmy's dupe talent is or do passive is not really going to be working too much because of the block hp recovery she's going to taunt which means charmy can only use her skill one for two turns which means she can only use the really bad heal for that amount of time right and then what's even funnier at max dupe she completely nullifies charmy because okay let's let me explain when you taunt Charmy, she could only use the skill one because you cannot use buffing attack buffing skills when you're taunted so charmy has to hit noel for two turns and when she's at LR5, every time she's hit, she removes continuous HP recovery buffs. Charmy is only heals our HP recovery buffs, right? So it completely means that at dupe 5, Noelle cooks Charmy because she removes Charmy's heals every time she's attacked. And Charmy will have to attack Noelle for two turns. So what is Charmy going to do, right? So that is a big thing. Um to mention there's a lot more taunts now even radis has some you know could even cook her right because he also has the taunt with the absolute silence there's a lot of different ways and upcoming ways even asta has the aoe taunt so charmy you know for units like that it does um kind of get a bit rough now equally uh, mimosa her res is the main thing that she does offer but she is very slow insanely slow right you need i'm pretty sure at max dupe is when she even gets a bit quicker but in terms of the whole game, right, she is extremely slow at 101 speed. She's at defender's levels of speed, which in this meta for healing is not the best. You would rather be maybe before the, the DPS is a lot to make sure that they're alive. And to also apply like defense increase, right? But even at that, Asta has a higher level of defense increase. Black Asta, right? Whenever I say Asta, think of Black Asta, please. So Asta has a higher level of defense increase, so you don't need that. The res is pretty good, but you could just very easily kill uh, Mimosa, right? So we're kind of entering towards that. And then again, you could just taunt Mimosa very, very easily. So besides that, we're looking pretty decent, I think, for S rank. I think we're missing a couple of units that let me just check on that. So next up, Charlotte, not really like, okay, she's there, right? She's there. You could very easily kill her. She's one of the easiest units that you can kill, especially with Julius, right? That's the first thing. So she doesn't really pose a threat to that. Um... Maybe in the future, if we consider with Witch Queen, I might bump Charlotte back up to S. But as of right now, solid A tier, right? She does do good. She has her team, but I, it's not really threatening. I don't think. I don't really find it threatening. So, you know, she's there. And then next up, Kiato. Damage is all he does. And we're starting to get to a point where it's not just damage you need, right? So, for example, Langris is pure damage, but he has immortality, which lets him keep him alive. And then he has his heals at max dupe, which I'm not really counting him at max dupe. I don't really think you need it too much at this current moment. But for the full mono green team, which over time, obviously, if you really care about him, you could build him up and Langris will be a decent option. But, you know, 
he he has something else, right? He has something else where Kyoto is pure damage, which won't always be good, especially if it's only a Kyoto and they're trying to just completely buff the Kyoto. Guess what? Noelle applies the 40% damage reduction. She could reapply it on her ultimate, right? And then you have damage reduction, so this Kyoto is going to be doing kind of like nothing, especially because we don't have Transcendence yet. So that's a big thing. I think it does change the meta a lot. And I kind of have to look at units very differently on Global and on JP because, for example, right, the for Transcendence, defenders tanks right of course their defense went up but for dps's their attack went up their defense did not so basically you're doing more damage and taking way more okay it's not like it's scaled up perfectly right it's not even it's attack went up two times not exactly but you know attack went up two times defense went up 1.2 times right so like there was a big gap between the amount of defense increase we got from transcendence and the amount of attack increase we got for dps's so DPSs right at the moment on global is very different because Julius on JP easily kills with his counter or his combo every time because his, his attack against DPSs is way higher. You're easily pumping out 150k damage on a combo with William, right? So it's just that's very important to consider. But yeah, no, uh, not looking too good for just straight DPSs at the moment, right? Um, but still, Kyoto ain't horrible, right? That's why he's an A tier, but. There is that. Now, going on to the A tier, there's a lot of stuff we're going to have to kind of clean out, right? Clean it out. So, first off, um, Leopold, damage-wise, not really too crazy. Not at all. Like, his lifesteal isn't really that, like, important. It will usually heal you up, but he's very easy to kill. As a red attacker, very easy to kill. Doesn't have any barriers on his own. Maybe, like, obviously, a lot of these units do help get helped by Charlotte, but there's no point in running Leopold overall. So, that's the first one. Noel. Barriers are cool, but like, whatever, like, it doesn't really matter. If I bump down that Noel, this Noel is also getting bumped down to B. There's no way she's staying up there. Yami, not doing the damage needed anymore, especially because it's only blue. Uh, well, it's predominantly blue. A lot of blue units. Um, very easy to make them just kind of like, yikes. And I think you could remove the counterattack buff with uh, Halloween Noel. So that's another thing if you're really scared about that, I guess. And then Asta doesn't really offer too much. Is too slow and taunts like that just don't really work out too well um and because i'm putting this asta in b i would put this asta in c just logically speaking this asta is better than the sr asta but still they're both like mediocre now you know also does go down i'm telling you bro like the the tier list it, it, everything's basically like just i was i was about to say a french word oh my god i hate when my french bleeds into english everything's getting lowered right that's what i wanted to say now Next up, Raya. Okay, got to consider this. If you don't super uh, buff Raya, then he won't be doing damage. And if you do, well, it's very easy to kill him or just remove his buffs with Noel. One of the things you got to consider is that only buffing one unit, right? Noel just like, Halloween Noel just removes him. So, you know, it's not really, not really a problem anymore is the way I see it. Now, I don't know how Fuego was ever in A, but hello, B tier, right? Um, you know, a lot of these units are starting to be all here. Um, it's just very hard to put them higher because they're all like not really doing too much. They just have like straight damage or like a little gimmick, but a gimmick that isn't really too good is the way I'm seeing it. Now, Vanessa 2 is going to go down. She does have like some uses, like the total defense could definitely allow you to have a certain type of play style, but not too crazy. Definitely not worthy of A tier as we are starting to clean it out, right? Now, next up, Fauna, straight damage, only AoE, right? But you could easily just get rid of the alt with Noel now. Like Noel is just the god, right, the god, but even just besides that, right, there's other ways, if you want to basically just use the skill two first, or, oh, no, wait, never mind, so, never mind what I just said, but, um, yeah, so, like, the skill two is blocked, so you have to use the alt, um, which isn't a problem in this case, usually you would want to use the alt first, now that I'm thinking about it, but, right, her damage is going to be severely impacted by just everything around, and she's not really going to be killing too many of the times, or she, she could just get killed right away, which is why a lot of the DPSs you see in S tier have some sort of survivability, or are blue, right, so you can see Noel, Barrier, Fuego, MO, Langris, MO, and um, Yami just does have some pretty good value, which let me talk about him real quick. Um, why he's still here, I guess you could put him in A, but it's just what he does, right? Um, putting that silence is still very strong. Applying HP recovery immunity is also very strong. And then besides that, he does remove barriers on his combo, which is very good. And his skill one will do pretty good damage. So like he is an all around pretty good unit. And I've seen a lot of people, I think Vulcan's a pretty big rep for this guy. So like he's honestly pretty decent. He's like a low s rank right there's like obviously in between in s rank not everyone is exactly equal he's on the lower side for sure right for 
Sure. Now, I'd say this uh, makes up A rank quite well overall. I'm not really going to lie. I'm, I'm pretty content with that, I, I think. I mean, Kohono, it, it pretty solid too. All of these guys, not that bad. Um, yeah, so I think I'm good with that overall. Not really going to mind that too much. Just very quickly, I guess, we'll just put these two up because they do have an AoE stun, which could end up being kind of toxic. Um, just a little thing. Like, they have a very mediocre use. But it's a use, and I just like I feel like I'll at least shout them out a bit, give them that little uh, little thing, right? Little little thing. Now, I think we're pretty much uh, completely done at this point. We have pretty much yeah, we have everything uh, up to where it needed to be. So now we're gonna be doing the new units, being the five new units. Now, first off, if it wasn't already obvious, Noel is an S plus unit easily, right? She could even be in a league of her own, I'd say, um, and I would completely be in agreement with you right she lowers the damage that the enemy dps's do makes them take more damage at two dupes lowers their damage even further stops them from using ultimate stops them from using buffs takes off their buffs and lowers their sp right amazing unit right and there's just nothing you could really want more from a unit having aoe debuffs and single target godly debuffs right so just too good right and then even on her combo you could play with it with certain DPSs that don't remove barrier on their combo and just remove it. Like if you want to put her with Julius, Julius uses his combo. But to be fair, Noel's going to remove the barrier and then Julius attacks and kills, right? So there's definitely different ways that you could end up wanting to play it. I mean, she really does change the game. She makes DPSs do less damage. And since we don't have Transcendence, like a lot of DPSs are going to suffer from this for sure, easily. And she just makes it way too easy for um, units to basically be just completely useless. And it's units that have or are very much centered around their buff skills that are suffering greatly from the well because you cannot stop a taunt unless you have it built into your kit like season six charlotte she's the only unit who could block taunts 100 percent of the time at max dupe now next up black asta i personally believe he's at s plus but this one is probably going to be controversial for a lot of people right I know Pride Win did put him at S, and I could see the argument, okay? But Black Asta still has a lot of defensive capabilities on the skill two with his skill page, even at one dupe, right? Or zero dupes, right? Um, you get the total defense, which applies the block for two turns, which means every time you're hit with this total defense active, if you have that talent, or the, sorry, the passive, talent, pass, the talent, my bad, talent. I keep on mixing up the two. If you have the talent where when you block, you get debuff block. It's insane, right? You have debuff lock for two turns. It's very good. With the defense increase, so you're getting damage reduction. The debuff lock, technically, if you have that um, talent. And then you're taking less damage from the defense. He taunts for two turns, which is very strong, right? Um, and then he could stun on his uh, combo, which is actually insanely strong for later on in the game. But even besides that, he taunts all enemies when he does activate anti-magic and gives stun block just at the beginning of a battle. There's a lot of stuff this guy's doing. And then if you just... If the defensive version of, of him doesn't work, well, he does have his offensive version when he falls under 40%. That is extremely strong, right? So he's an amazing tank, and it's very good. For later on, he definitely, after the first turn, he just skyrockets in terms of value because either he's going to be taking all the damage or he's going to be supporting the other people by not taking as much damage. And he's looking crazy, right? Two-turn total defense is wild, okay? So Black Asta is insane. And we, he should help the meta a lot, but obviously he's not out. And this is a different meta that he's being brought into. No Witch Queen. Biggest thing, no Witch Queen. So he's not going to be an outright DPS. You got to understand that he's going to be more tanking. And then later on, if he does take enough damage, but still under good threshold, he'll be fine. So this Black Asta is going to cook. How well? We'll have to see, but he should be good. And Witch Queen, I'm pretty sure, is coming in Season 5. So we're not going to have to wait too long either way. Okay. Now next up, Charmy. Charmy's actually quite good. She's just there that you could put her. Use her alt, and then she could just kind of chill, right? She has her immort immortality, which is going to keep her alive. And then her pumpkin is going to slowly trickle away enemies' HPs by applying burns over time. And then also pop, right? Pop, and then they're dead. So Charmy is going to be pretty good in that regard. Um, especially if you have her skill page, starting to get extra dupes in the skill page will be crazy. And she could get that stun if she has the skill page. When people have pumpkins, she just uh, skill ones them and boom, they're stunned. So this Charmy actually is quite good, right? Quite good and could help Fuego if you're really trying to build that burn team. Maybe like, you know, Black Asta, Charmy, Fuego could be a pretty toxic burn team. Uh, we'll have to see, right? You know, applies whatever 
whoever I silence to whoever Asta tanks, right? And then these two do what they have to do. They both have immortality, which is honestly a pretty good combination, if you ask me, for sure. Now, next up, Gulduri is actually better than you would think. Um, now, I want to make one thing clear in this video because I'm not going to talk about him for a little bit. Is that if you see invulnerability, so basically when it says you give invulnerability to the person with the lowest HP for three turns, okay? Um, invulnerability for three turns means three turns total. So it's not three turns on the person you're applying it. It's three turns on the like uh, turn bar on the right. So let's say it's Julius, Noel, and then Asta, right? Julius goes once, okay? He uses up a turn for the buff, even if it's an enemy, right? And then he has an extra turn because he killed someone. Oh, that's another turn for the buff. And then Noel goes, and that's another turn, and then the invulnerability is gone. It does stop you from taking damage, but it's uh very rough, right? Now, this can actually be good, though, in some cases, if you're lucky and it's enemy turns all three times after, for sure. But if it's your turns right after, ally turns also count to take this off. But, for example, let's say it's someone with immortality who just lost their immortality, right? And they're at 1% HP. Well, this could save them for at least a bit. And if they could get a heal, that's great. If they could heal himself, that's great. But, you know, it could actually come into play. It's mainly also his damage reduction. That's pretty good. Gotta admit. And then this giving protection. Protection is a very strong ability. Not even combos can attack him, right? Because usually when you're taunted, let's say Julius is taunted, but he could use a combo and still attack the person he's taunted to because the other person isn't taunted is exactly how it works. This also does apply all attack increase. And he's very quick. 115 speed is insane. So yeah, no, Gulduri actually is uh, quite good. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie at all. But Veto suffers from the tank problem where if you're too slow and you really need to go earlier on, then it sucks because this guy has an AoE taunt. Now, not even just an AoE taunt, it's a two turn AoE enhanced taunt. 70% chance, I'm pretty sure. Yep, there we go. So, what enhanced taunt does is that every time you're uh, someone attacks, right, when they're taunted with the enhanced taunt, you heal yourself by 10%. But that's basically his whole kit, right? He has damage reduction, or sorry, defense and endurance. And that's kind of, he heals himself, but like, oh, right, here's the damage reduction. So damage reduction with endurance and defense, but like, he's going to be tanky. But like, that's kind of it. And by the time he applies his taunts, the problem is, it's just not going to be worth it anymore. And he doesn't do damage at all, which in this kind of tanking meta, you're going to start having to do damage over time, right? Especially Black Asa, the Mary Leona. So it's going to be very hard. And like, there's not really a team for him, which is another problem. Like, what are you going to slot him into, right? What are you? And then he's going to apply what he needs to after his turn is over or after everyone has a done their turns. And then you get the big tanky part because you do want to use the taunt first, right? To make sure that people don't use whatever they do. Um, you want to make sure you apply this, fir this first and then this second. But this second might mean you're already dead by that point or close to dying. So it's very hard to play him. Slow units are hard to play in a lot of cases, unless you're just a Mario Leona or a Black Asta case. But yeah, uh, not looking too good for Vettel. My, I, I really do think that this Vettel does suck um, quite a lot. I, if they gave him a bit of offensive, he would have been good for sure, but he just doesn't really have it, right? He He's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate in that regard for sure. But yeah, this kind of makes up my PvP tier list. Remember, I consider these units mainly as like how good they can be. Not really saying every unit is max duped, max skill page, but like, let's say it really helps them out. Then sure, I might consider it at that, but not every unit is for sure. But this is the tier list. Let me know what you guys think. Let me make sure that nothing's really off base with what I have. And I think we're good. We are good. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope this video doesn't get corrupted. I made a reaction uh, to the Pride Win tier list and... Uh, it got corrupted. 20 minutes of my life wasted. More like 25 because I was taking pauses in between. But yeah, very unfortunate. But I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.